Hello everyone and welcome to a new span of lecture in our ETG course and today we have selected a very important topic from the clinical practice which is torsade de pointe. Of course torsade de pointe is one of the very important morphological types of ventricular tachycardia which raise an alarm that this patient is in a critical condition with high risk of developing VF and sudden cardiac deaths and that's why we selected this topic today to have a specific lecture. So today we are going to learn the mechanisms of torsade de pointe and to know the ECG features of this ECG presentation. Of course, we know these morphological types of ventricular tachycardia. We divide the ventricular tachycardia in the last lecture into monomorphic VT, which shows regular and similar morphology, and polymorphic VT, which shows regular and variable morphology. And of course, in polymorphic VT, we have divided them it's into two subtypes, which is a polymorphic VT with normal QT interval and polymorphic VT with prolonged QT interval. And we explained in the last time the difference between pleomorphic and polymorphic VT, as polymorphic show multiple morphology, whereas pleomorphic VT shows more than one morphology, but not continuously changing, as in polymorphic VT. So, for example, here in this ACG, we can see, of course, that it is not monomorphic because we have more than one morphology and at least we can see three or four complex morphology. If we draw an imaginary line to represent the baseline, we can see that all the complex show positive axis in this ECG strip. And so I can expect that this patient has polymorphic VT, but most probably he has normal QT interval if I check his resting ECG if it is available. And of course, the common causes for polymorphic VT with normal QT interval are myocardial ischemia. So for example, in acute myocardial infarction, we can see this presentation, structural heart disease, and chinelopathies other than long QT syndrome. These can be the causes for this ECG presentation. But what about this ECG presentation, which of course is like as important spot diagnosis in ECG? We can see here that we have a run of non-sustained y complex tachycardia. Most probably, of course, it is non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. It is not monomorphic. We can see that it is polymorphic, as we can see multiple morphology with continuous changing in axis and morphology. But the problem is that the axis is continuously changing in a very rapid rate with like 180 degrees change in the axis. So here I can see, of course, also that in the resting ECG preceding this non-sustained VT, we can see evidence of prolonged QT interval. So I can predict that this long QT interval is a predisposing factor for this VT. So I can assume that this patient has polymorphic VT with long QT interval or on top of long QT interval as a predisposing factor. So we can call it another name, which is Tercet de Pointe. What's the meaning of Tercet de Pointe? Tercet, of course, is a French word for twisting and Pointe is also a French word for points. So Tercet de Pointe means twisting of points, which stands for the polymorphic VT with long QT interval. And the name explains itself. It is a literal name means that the axis here is continuously changing or continuously twisting around the point. The word to set the point is like a name derived from the ballet dancing, which means that there is continuous changing or continuous twisting around a certain point, and that's why this ECG presentation was called this terminology describing the pattern of the continuous changing in the axis of about 180 degrees. So, for example, if we see this ECG strip and draw an imaginary line to represent the baseline of the ECG, we can see here that the complex are sometimes negative, sometimes positive, sometimes negative in a very short cycles. So, there is continuous twisting of the ECG axis around the baseline, resulting in very rapid and irregular rhythm. So, this is polymorphic VT with long QT interval, which we can call torsade de point. Let's see what are the ACG criteria of torsade de pointe. Of course, we can abbreviate it into TDP, with a TD letter is in the small form, and the T and P are in capital form. Number one, it can show the variation of the morphology of the QRS complex from P to P, so most probably you would not see one morphology in two or three Ps, continuous and rapid change in the complex morphology. Also, we can see variation of the QRS axis or vector from positive to negative of about 180 degrees change and then back again to the first axis. So there is continuous change of the axis as well. Also, the heart rate here is ranging from 150 and 
may exceed 200 beats per minute and this is usually the common form so the heart rate is extremely rapid up to 250 beats per minute and that explains why it is a very malignant form that can degenerate into VF also, of course, we can see evidence of prolonged QT interval in the sinus rhythm preceding or following the non-sustained VT, either due to congenital long QT syndrome or acquired like in the cause, hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, subarachnoid hemorrhage, all of this can cause acquired long QT interval. Usually it occurs in non-sustained runs. So usually you will see non-sustained VT in the presentation of polymorphic VT with long QT, which is your the point. And the rhythm strip usually here can show the baseline QT prolongation following or preceding the non-sustained run. Of course, you can see here short, long, short sequence between the RR interval because of course we know that this short, long, short sequence or coupling result in that impulse comes in their relative refractory period which can predispose to the torset de point and then it can predispose to ventricular fibrillation so if you see this sequence of course you can predict what was the cause of torset de point so remember that torset de point usually terminates spontaneously but it frequently recurs and may degenerate into VF so just don't reassure yourself because you see this run of torset de point is resulting spontaneously as non-sustained run no it would recur and this patient has a very high risk of VF and so you need to check the code either it is congenital long tissue syndrome or it is acquired so you need to check the electrolytes check the medication and most probably this patient may need antiurismic medication which is IV magnesium sulfates so what's the correlation between torsade de point and long QT interval? How does long QT interval predispose to torsade de point? We need to understand the correlation here. Of course, we remember this terminology, which is the transmural dispersion of repolarization. We know from the lecture of ECG terminology, it is a duration from the peak of T wave to the end of T wave, as a peak represents epicardial repolarization and the base represents endocardial repolarization. So TDR, when it is prolonged, it is considered a substrate for re-entry and of course substrate for developing after depolarization and we are going to understand how come these two mechanisms come together. This phenomenon of course is present in long QT syndrome in which in some of its forms you can see broad-based T waves so the TDR here is prolonged. Of course, also we remember this terminology, which is the QT dispersion. And QT dispersion is a terminology that can be calculated from the 12 lead ECG as it is the difference between the longest QT and the shortest QT interval on the 12 lead surface ECG. So we detect the minimum QT and maximum QT and calculate the difference. Let's now understand the mechanism. So here we see this diagram of the heart from which we are focusing on a sector of the myocardium. Of course, we know that prolonged QT interval predisposed to early after depolarization, and this here the result of prolonged repolarization, prolonged TDR resulting in early after depolarization, which is a form of triggered activity. So triggered activity here would start in one point inside the myocardium, and so there is a voltage difference between this point and another point, and so the voltage transmits or the impulse transmits from one point to another. And of course, as long as there is increased QT dispersion, as there is a difference in the repolarization type between one point and one point, this results in development of free entry inside the myocardium. But free entry here is in a non-uniform way. Not in the same way that you see, for example, in AVNRT, AVRT, scar-related VT. No, it is in a different way. Because here there is a voltage difference between different point in the heart there is after depolarization in one point and there is long QT dispersion and that's why explaining that the longer the QT dispersion the higher risk of torsade de point in this patient so this non-uniform re-entry or haphazard way result in the development of polymorphic VT with continuous change in morphology and continuous change in the axis. So to set the point to represent two combined mechanisms together, triggered activity was the start due to presence of the substrate and then development of re-entry inside the myocardium or intramyocardial re-entry in a non-uniform way resulting in this pattern of peculiar VT. So the end result is this pattern of torsade de point. 
in which you can see continuous change in the complex axis and morphology and in, in a very rapid way resulting in this rapid and irregular V2 run. And of course, it is a spot diagnosis that you need to detect. For example, in a patient admitted in ICU or CCU, you need to detect it on the monitor or for example, if it is accidentally detected in the resting ECG because it is a very high risk ECG run that can result in ventricular fibrillation because this extremely rapid rate and the complete and very irregular rhythm can result in a peat coming for example on the relative fracture period or sometimes we call it the supernormal excitability leading to an R on T phenomenon that can predispose to ventricular fibrillation resulting in the irregular and undulating chaotic rhythm with absence of any, any organized complex and of course this would result in cardiac arrest so to reset the point increase risk of sudden cardiac death and that's why you need to detect the causes to correct and you need to intervene with magnesium sulfate so at the end of this short span of lecture we understand the mechanism of Tursat de Point and we understood how triggered activity and re-entry combine to result in this ACG pattern and we understood today the ACG features of Tursat de Point. And our take home message today, Tursat de Point is a life threatening type of arrhythmia which could degenerate into VF and of course it is a spot diagnosing ACG which should raise your attention to the presence of underlying longitude interval to search for its causes, correct it and intervene with antiarrhythmic medication. Thank you very much for your listening.